Spain has many mythological beings, stories, and legends. Some even go back centuries before the Roman Empire conquered the Iberian Peninsula, when the ancient Celts and Iberians populated these lands. Spain has diverse cultures, languages, and traditions that make its folklore and mythology one of the richest and most varied that you can find, and in this video we will know some of them. Number 1. Urco The Urco is a huge dog from Galician and Asturian mythology, generally considered a harbinger of death. It is said that the Urco emerges from the sea on misty winter nights, dragging noisy chains that howl loudly over the roar. Depending on the accounts, he will begin to roam the streets of the village or town, visiting the home of the soon-to-be-dead and recruiting dogs for his pack along the way. The Urco appears as a dog, either black or white, with large horns and ears, as well as fiery eyes in some descriptions. Accounts of size vary from simply large to outright colossal, but a fairly common saying states that it could eat 20 bags of loose change in one bite as easily as a donkey eats two grains of barley. The Urco is said to inhabit Boren, a dark and misty world somewhere underwater. Number 2. Lamiak The Lamiak is a mermaid or Halia-like creature in Basque mythology. Lamiak live in the river. They are very beautiful and stand on the shore combing their long hair with a golden comb. They easily charm men. Lamiak help those who give them gifts by giving them help in work. If a farmer left food for them on the riverbank, they would eat it at night, and in return they would finish a field that he had left unplowed. In some places, it is believed that the bridges were built at night by Lamiak. In some places, Lamiak had to leave if the bridge they were building at night was left unfinished at Cockcrow. People believed that Lamiak had left a river if a stone was missing from the bridge. Most of the Lamiak disappeared when men built small churches in the forest. A Lamiak stands on the other side of the rainbow combing her hair. When the sun shines on her hair, the rainbow opens. Number 3. Santa Compagna Although the appearance of the Santa Campagna varies according to the tradition of different areas, the most widespread is formed by a procession of souls in pain, dressed in black robes with hoods that wander during the night. This ghostly procession forms two rows, which are wrapped in shrouds and barefoot. Each ghost carries a lighted candle, and their passing leaves a smell of wax or incense in the air. At the head of this ghostly company is a larger specter called Estadea. In addition to these visions, there are other legends that say that an intense cold is noticed whenever he appears, in addition to the smell and the sound of chains. It is also said that the ghosts are like a fog. The procession is led by a living person, mortal, carrying a cross and a cauldron of holy water, followed by the animas with lighted candles, not always visible, noticing their presence in the smell of wax and the wind that rises as they pass. This living person who precedes the procession can be male or female, depending on whether the patron saint of the parish is a saint or a patroness. It is also believed that whoever performs this function does not remember during the day what happened during the course of the night. Only the persons punished with this punishment can be recognized by their extreme thinness and pallor. Each night their light will be more intense, and each day their pallor will increase. They are not allowed to rest any night so that their health weakens until they fall ill without anyone knowing the causes of such a mysterious illness. Condemned to wander night after night until they die, or another unwary person is caught, to whom the one leading the procession must pass the cross he carries, thus freeing himself from the souls in pain and condemning the other person. They walk, uttering prayers, funeral chants, and ringing a small bell. As they pass, all animal noises in the forest cease beforehand. The dogs announce the arrival of the Santa Compagna by howling in an inordinate manner. The cats flee terrified and really scared. To get rid of this obligation, the person who sees the Santa Compagna passing by must draw a circle on the ground and enter it or lie face down. Number 4. Anjana The Anjanas are magical female spirits that inhabit near bodies of water, originating from Cantabrian mythology, known for their beauty and good deeds and for their enmity with the evil Ojankanu. Anjanas are generally considered spirits of the forest, although some myths claim that they were sent by God to do good deeds and return 400 years later. In any case, they are known to guard the forest, guide those lost in it, reward the good, 
punish the bad and repair or even anticipate the havoc the Ohyankanu may wreak. Anjanas can be seen inhabiting springs, often talking to the water, or strolling through the forest eating fruits and honey. They also build palaces inside natural grottos and fill them with gold and treasures with which to tempt the greedy and reward the good. They will also be found on the eve of the spring equinox, dancing until dawn and scattering roses. Finally, although generally good, some Anjanas can turn bad. These beautiful human-like spirits have long black or golden, braided or straight hair, fair skin, and slanted calm eyes with black or blue pupils. Anjanas often wear white dresses and blue cloaks, adorn their hair with silk ribbons and garlands, and carry a magical staff or pickaxe that may be golden, green, or change color every day depending on the myth. Anjanas are shapeshifters and can disguise themselves as nightingales, beetles, or trees. Leaving aside their general protection, Anjanas will also visit villages to bring gifts to the good, as well as bring clothes to the poor at Christmas once every four years. Number 5. Basajan. The Basajan, or Lord of the Woods, is a hairy and generally peaceful giant from Basque and Navarre's mythology. The Basajan were thought to build megaliths and held the secret to various skills and technological advances that humans learned through deception. The Basajan are huge humanoids, two to five meters tall, covered in hair, with beards and long hair, sometimes reaching their feet. The Basajan also had a female counterpart, the Basandere, who lacked a beard. Some versions of the myth claim that their souls were circular, much like the hooves of a cow. The Basajan used to be shepherds, often seen guarding huge flocks of sheep, whistling and shouting to warn human shepherds of approaching storms or packs of wolves, expecting a piece of bread in return, which would be picked up while they slept. The Basajan, like the Gentilac, harnessed their strength to build megaliths, and new agriculture, music, blacksmithing, carpentry, architecture, and similar technologies long before humans. Martin Chiki, or Saint Martinico, was a human trickster, known for stealing the knowledge of the Basajan through luck and wit. The Basajan were known to keep large piles of wheat grains obtained from agriculture but shared none with humans. So Martin put on huge, loose boots and climbed up to meet a Basajan and made a bet. Whoever managed to jump the highest over the pile would get the pile of wheat. Naturally, Basajan won, and Martin fell into the heap, collecting a multitude of grains in his boots. Having collected the seeds, mankind lacked only the knowledge to use them, which Martin gained by eavesdropping on a singing Basajan, learning not only when to plant a multitude of crops, including the newly obtained wheat, but also learning about music for the first time. The Basajan myth is supposed to have its roots in human coexistence with Neanderthals, both because of the knowledge they had when they first met humans and because of the hairy descriptions shared by both Neanderthals and Basajan. Number 6. Gentle. The Gentiles were a race of giants in Basque mythology. It was believed that the Gentiles lived alongside the Basque people. They threw rocks from one mountain to another, which led to various tales and explanations about the ancient stone buildings and large isolated rocks. It is believed that giants created the Neolithic monuments, such as dolmens, found throughout the Basque country. Even the Basque ball game, Pilota, is attributed to these stone throwers. The tradition is still alive in the Basque power games of lifting and throwing stones. Some attributed to the Gentiles the defeat of Roland at the Battle of Roncevaux, where the Basques defeated the Frankish army by throwing stones at them. They are also said to have invented metallurgy and the saw, and to have first cultivated wheat, teaching humans how to farm. However, they were unwilling to move into the valleys from the mountains, with a certain unwillingness to progress. They disappeared underground under a dolmen in the valley of Aratzaren in Navarra, when a portentous luminous cloud appeared, perhaps a star, which is said to have announced the birth of Christ, and the end of the Gentile era. Other stories say that the Gentile threw themselves off a mountain. Only Olincero, a giant who appears at Christmas, remained. When making this video, I realized that I didn't know many of the beings in this list. If you know any of them that should be in part two, write me below in the comments. Number seven, Shana. While it might look like the top number four on this list, Anjana, one comes from Cantabria and the other from Asturias. The Shana is a character found in Asturian mythology. A Shana can be a beneficent spirit, offering love water to travelers and rewards of gold or silver to those found worthy through some undefined trial. 
While others may attack people and steal their food, they live in springs and caves. Stories about Shanas can be divided into four broad categories. First, stories in which the Shana has a child. In these stories, the Shana exchanges her baby for that of another woman. Second, stories of Shana who suffer a curse. In these stories, an act performed according to a secret law can disenchant them. Third, Shanas who possess treasures and riches. The Shana may have acquired the riches by accident or by gift or theft. Sometimes the human character in the story gets the treasure, but most often not. Finally, stories about Shanas who are malicious. The most important tales in this category are those in which the Shana enters a house through a keyhole. Those in which the Zana carries off and charms someone. Their hypnotic voices can be heard during spring and summer nights. Those who have a pure soul and listen to the song will be filled with a sense of peace and love. Those whose souls are not pure will feel like they are being suffocated and may go mad. Here's Johnny! Always female, it is a creature of extraordinary beauty that is believed to live in springs, rivers, waterfalls, or wooded regions with pure water. Shanas are generally depicted in one of two ways. In one, they appear as young, very beautiful, Nordic girls with long blonde hair. She is usually depicted as petite or slender with long blonde or light brown hair, most often curly. This image is usually associated with Shanas who possess treasure or those under a spell. In contrast, in tales in which Shanas steal children and enter houses to bite or steal, the Shanas are small, thin, and dark in color. Number 8. Muladona The Muladona, also known by the name of Dona Mula, meaning mule woman in Catalan. It is a mythological being well known in the peninsula, more specifically in Catalonia, where according to legend the Mula Dona was a woman who was not religious and was quite irreverent, and therefore the villagers cursed her, turning her into a mule woman. Since then, the Mula Dona walks through the mountains, and when she sees a shepherd with a group of mules tends to join the group, which alters the mules to the point that it is said that many of them, frightened and rowdy, came to die by rushing down the ravines because of the alteration that had caused them to see the Muladona. The appearance of the Muladona is the same as that of any other mule, but it was more shoddy. Its mane is like that of a woman's hair, and its face, without ceasing to be animal, has a certain human appearance. But if you do not look very carefully, the Muladona can go unnoticed by many shepherds. Number 9. Mura Beautiful and seductive, Mura live under a spell. They are said to occupy liminal spaces and are stone builders of formidable strength. They will appear to you singing like nightingales and combing their beautiful manes, golden like the sun or red like fire. If you are lucky, they will promise you treasures if you are able to release them by breaking the spell. According to folklore, the enchanted Mura are the souls of the young maidens who were left guarding the treasures held by the males. Muros, before heading to Murama. The fairy tales starring the enchanted Muras are of Celtic origin. They are related to other female water divinities. Almost every Portuguese or Galician village has a story about them. Just as the Mairu of Basque mythology built dolmens, the Muras are also builders of ancient monuments. Enchanted Muras were believed to be the builders of Paleolithic hill forts, dolmens, and megaliths. They are also believed to live there, the Muras are also guardians of gold that can appear in many forms, such as figs, charcoal, skirts, skeins of thread, animals, or tools. One can be rewarded with this gift by a Mura, or it can simply be found or stolen. I don't need the gold of a Mura to be happy. I am satisfied that you are liking this video and that you are subscribing. That is very useful for me. Number 10. Coco. The Coco is a common monster in many Spanish-speaking countries. El Coco is a being that likes to scare children who do not want to sleep. His favorites are those who do not obey or who misbehave. El Coco likes to hide in the rooms of badly behaved children, as well as in their closets, drawers, and under the bed to scare them at night. In Spain, parents sing lullabies or tell rhymes to children, warning them that if they don't sleep, El Coco will come looking for them. Latin America also has El Coco, although its folklore tends to be quite different commonly mixed with native beliefs and because of cultural contacts, sometimes more closely related to the U.S. Coco. In Brazilian folklore, a similar character called Cuca is depicted as a female humanoid caiman or old woman with a sack. There is a famous lullaby that most parents sing to their children that says the Cuca will come for them and make them soup or soap if they don't sleep. 
If you want to know more about the folklore of Brazil, I have released a video about their creatures. Go through the channel to see it, and I wait for you in the next video.